Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture on communities of practice. What are communities of practice? They are formed by people who engage in a process of collective learning in a shared domain of human endeavor. Um, what are some characteristics of members of COP communities? First, they define their identity by a shared domain of interest. So they're, they're interested in the same thing. Uh, two, they practice within the, the within the domain, so they are practitioners of whatever their domain of interest is. Um, three, they engage in joint activities, they discuss issues, they help each other, and they share information. And based on that, four, they develop a shared repertoire of resources together. These include experiences, stories, tools, ways of addressing re recurring problems, etc. So it's a, a bunch of individual people who work together. Um, here are some characteristics of COP communities. So you take the individuals and they make a community. First, in terms of learning, they develop new ideas and strategies together. Two, in terms of problem sharing, um, the activities they, they engage in are problem focused. Three, um, there's mutual engagement. The members who are in COPs test and react to new ideas and help each other. Four, in terms of innovation, uh, they can cross boundaries to create new ideas because people have different backgrounds. Five, there's connection. People who may never have connected before are otherwise connected through the COP. Six, uh, best practice sharing. Uh, knowledge flows from A, individual insights, and B, group best practices that have been used, documented, and verified. So they come both individually from a group, these best practices. And seven, knowledge stewarding. Um, so knowledge is collected, organized, connected with members, upgraded, and redeployed. So it's uh, knowledge is, is, is repurposed for um, the COPs. Uh, COPs are used broadly in, in education in various uh, settings. Schools, uh, they occur. Say if you have a principal who organizes that or a department head. School districts can be between administrators based on that. Three, isolated administrators who may be living and working far apart. And four, teacher training and teacher trainees may be engaged in COPs to help uh, improve their practice. All of the above are examples of peer-to-peer -peer professional development activities. Um, uh, COPs can impact an educational practice, and they impact this practice along three dimensions. First, internally. A uh, question opposes how to organize educational experiences that ground school learning and practice through participation in communities around subject matters. Two, externally, how to connect the experiences of students to actual practice through peripheral forms of participation in broader communities beyond the walls of the school. And three, over lifetime of students. How to serve the lifelong learning needs of students by organizing communities of practice focus on topics of continuing interest to students beyond the initial schooling period. So ideally, by creating these COPs, um, students themselves can extend their learning beyond the classroom. Uh, COPs have broader educational impact. Um, they're sort of they're tethered to the idea that one school is not the sole privileged locus of learning. And based on that, two, school is part of a broader learning system. Based on that, three, life is the main learning event. School is not. School is one part of that larger life learning event. And four, um, as a, an incentive to you to educators, schools, classrooms, and training sessions should serve learning happening in the world. That was Communities of Practice. As always, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.